Welcome back. I'm Ehrman, and this is a showdown between our two best Formula One simulators. If you watch the channels of former F1 drivers, you'll very quickly work out that a Seto Corsa with RSS Formula cars is the de facto sim experience of choice outside of the insane proprietary in-house simulators that racing teams develop for millions of dollars. For us mere mortals, it appears that a relatively old simulator platform with some remarkable work done by modding teams to bring the physics up to modern spec has become validated by the drivers themselves. This is in favour of even the official Codemasters F1 series of games which, though engrossing and captivating for fans, can certainly be said to teeter a little closer to game than simulator. So, as luck would have it, the other day the largest online sim racing platform in the world, iRacing, released its rendering of the Mercedes W12 F1 car. This was astonishing, because outside of the licensed F1 series of games, we've not seen an official modern F1 car hit a quote-unquote real simulator in quite some years. This, of course, created a very natural question, and one that you guys accosted me with mercilessly ever since it was released. Just how good is the iRacing version compared to the established Assetto Corsa plus RSS version? Given that Assetto Corsa's development was locked off some years ago, while iRacing has continued to be actively developed into the modern day, including a notable tyre update to bring the sim truly among the forerunners of the industry for car dynamics, one would have to be fairly optimistic about this release. Add to this Mercedes' official support and data for the car, and we have the recipe for something potentially magical. So here we are, loaded up and ready to test both versions of the modern 2021 F1 car at Spielberg, one of the most scenic, though thanks to Austria, now also perhaps most dystopic tracks in the world. But first, let's test to see if that subscribe button's working. We'll begin with iRacing, the new kid on the block. A bit ironic to say about a sim from 2008, but here we are. We get a nice AMG start screen on the wheel, after which we check the brake balance and ERS settings to make sure our button bindings are right. Confident we're good, we engage the pit limiter and head out for our first lap. We'll be doing an outlap with a regenerative ERS mode before we go all out into quality battery usage. The sound of the car hitting the pit limiter and grinding away is quite immersive and lifelike. There's a very good sense of connection to the car at low speed and surprisingly good force feedback for iRacing. As we head towards T2, I wonder first whether I'll lock the brakes then how the corner exit will go, as that turn is a textbook case study in causing cars to light their rear tyres up. Lots of engine braking to help us stop, and we cut through the apex with very light throttle application. As the car gets weightless, there's a hugely satisfying sense of slip on the rear end. It's obvious we have to manage our throttle at low speed, like the real drivers do. We open DRS and head down toward a turn that loves to create understeer. We chew through the downshifts, generating some insane g-forces as the car slows and comfortably turns in. So far, the driving experience is extremely intuitive, and due to the insane aerodynamic performance of the car, almost feels arcade-like. The sensation of curb ripple is light, though exceptionally detailed, and reminds me of Automobilista 2. Once the aerodynamics kick in, you feel a wonderful security blanket here in the high-speed turns of Spielberg. The ability to have this level of faith in a car must be a skill unto itself in real life. We've shifted into attack ERS mode, just shy of the intended quality mode, and we can be extremely aggressive at the penultimate turn, much like in AMS 2 and R Factor 2. Flat out now, we line up for T1. Chewing through the gears, we throw the car in, assured the arrow will do its job. A wonderful balance of throttle modulation and trying not to fly out over the sausage curb makes us an absolute joy. Note how naturally the tyres reacted to the sausage curb, just naturally soaking up the impact, much as we've seen in the real world time and again. T2 is a great risk-reward trade-off. Will you break deep and risk locking, or try to carry speed out of the corner and risk snapping the rear? There's a wonderful sense of engagement between the car, track, and driver here at Spielberg and iRacing. There is a deep sense of confidence on the curbs. We know that our brake performance is better on the dark stuff, but we're not afraid of throwing a tyre on there. Until that happens. We got our rear left onto the slippery Astro and got a massive snap. 
Very natural correction there, though it lost us time. The car is fortunately still in one piece. The car can be driven in astounding anger, leaning on the soft tires and aero to just launch it into corners in a way that feels uncanny, yet somehow true to life at the same time. A convenient mistake, I get the right tires out onto the gravel, but due to the speed of the car, we just skid on through. Realistic or too forgiving? You decide. We absolutely send it through the final corner where it might be said the undercarriage damage is a little bit forgiving to the driver. For a lap time, about 7 tenths off Hamilton's recent qualifying. It's safe to say that a car like this is currently beyond my capabilities as a driver. It somehow manages to be both astoundingly easy, yet astoundingly difficult to drive at exactly the same time. At low speeds, modulating the pedals just right is an art form, though once the aero kicks in, it's just a matter of sending it at the right moments and having snappy reaction times. There is a wonderful sense of balance between the absurd aerodynamics and the soft tyres, both fighting against and working in concert with one another. Driving the car through the mid and high speed corners feels like a true ballet of precision. I have to admit that my immediate impression of the car really evoked the feeling of driving the RSS Formula Hybrid in the Seto Corsa, so it's very convenient that we're jumping straight into that next. The first thing that strikes one about a Seto Corsa is how much better it looks than iRacing. Not only the model detail, but the overall lighting and colour balance. Even though the track itself could certainly use a facelift, the car looks phenomenal. We leave the pits and hear an overall more juicy, full range and less filtered take on the engine sound. The force feedback is strange. It's heavy while stationary, extremely light at mid-speed and then damps up again at high speed. There is a pervading sense of vagueness to it that makes me feel unsure as we head down to T2. I don't have the confidence to go on the curb in AC as we turn towards the apex and the car gets yanked in very artificially. The snap is slow and progressive, but vague at the same time. I feel little sense of connection to the car at low speeds. The next turn often elicits understeer, so let's see what happens. The gearing is clearly different between the two cars as I have to drop down to third in order to make it. The car still wants to travel wide though, informing me some additional tuning of its balance is required. I don't get the same sense of security from the aerodynamic balance as I did in iRacing, and constantly expecting the car to snap on me even in the higher speed corners. The curbing, while noticeable through the force feedback, actually doesn't feel as detailed. We can send it through the two penultimate corners, much as we did in iRacing. We start now on the hot lap, heading down toward T1. My confidence level is still quite low. Breaking while gearing down to third for safety, I don't have the faith in the car to fly out of the apex on throttle. I spun out here multiple times in prior takes, with the aerodynamics of the car not locking me down like they did in iRacing, despite almost being maxed out in the setup. We get a big snap out of T2, largely my own fault due to a heavy throttle foot. That said, the snap did feel like it came on very vaguely and I was having to drive quite apprehensively, costing me loads of time. Overall, the sensation of driving this car is far less intuitive. This part of the track we can drive quite similarly to iRacing, though with a bit more apprehension over the curbs. This is probably the section of track where the two sims are at their most similar. As we get a massive snap on the last corner, thanks to that old single point tyre model still struggling with complex curve geometry. We crossed the line with a far slower time than we got in iRacing, which kind of leaves me scratching my head and wondering, what actually happened here? I ran these two tests in the same chronological order you just witnessed. iRacing first, followed by a Seto Corsa. My initial thought when driving the iRacing version is that it felt like an iRacing rendering of the RSS Formula Hybrid. In my mind, they were very similar. In reality, they were anything but. Driving the Assetto Corsa version immediately after was a bit like being thrown into a fist fight while three quarters drunk. The force feedback was more vague and less informative. The car's aerodynamic model felt far more simplified, evidenced by the many, many, many scuffles I had during high-speed cornering off-camera. This all left me with very little faith in the car. 
I have to confess some bias here. This is consistent with all my prior experiences of driving an Assetto Corsa. Ever since I first drove an AC many years ago, it became my least favourite modern simulator on the market from a driving dynamics perspective. Car behaviours on the edge always felt very floaty and disconnected. While this can be fine for drifting and road cars, it's an absolute mess for race cars. Again, this is all very consistent with the many races I've shot for this channel in AC, where each successful race was marred with dozens of failed attempts with me cursing the gods the entire way through. I simply don't enjoy driving in that sim and never have. Take that with a grain of salt. While the RSS cars take the potential of AC to another level, they unfortunately still suffer from the same fundamental shortfalls of the AC platform. What this means is that I think our ex-Formula 1 driver friends on YouTube are going to be very, very, very happy. The AMG car in iRacing is rendered on a level unlike I've ever experienced. The closest in quality for me, perhaps, would be the McLaren MP413 from R Factor 2 that provided a similar sense of connection as this new Mercedes. I set this up as a deathmatch between two leading simulators, but the outcome was more like a massacre iRacing is on its own level with rendering modern Formula 1 cars, and while I'm certainly no expert on modern Formula 1, I know some locked-in driving dynamics when I experience them. It appears this partnership with AMG has paid off. I can't help but hope it means that we get more manufacturers extricate themselves from the blanket F1 deal with Codemasters, and we get to see more of the Formula 1 grid rendered in an actual simulator. While Assetto Corsa is the clear loser from a driving dynamics perspective, Backed by CSP and Soul, it's still the graphical winner and will likely still be the platform of choice for those of us looking to set up immersive looking, if not immersive feeling races. I imagine there's going to be some crazy racing happening in the near future using this car. While my license rating is going to prohibit me from taking part in that for many months if not years, at the very least I can rest assured that some of you will be able to go wheel to wheel in this very impressive machine. Until next time, hit that sub to get notified of our next video, and until then, I'll see you all later.